What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another pre-season FPL video. In this one, I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm going for the best FPL player at every single Premier League club. It's also going to give me the chance to talk about why I haven't included some players, what I think their prospects are going to be, but I'll try and keep it as brief as possible because obviously there's a lot of clubs in the Premier League to go through. So if you enjoy it, give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you're new around here, and let's just quickly talk about Fan Team. So really happy to say that I've partnered once again with Fan Team for this season. This is a game that I played alongside FPL last year one of the things I love about it is the prize pool is massive right so there's a million pounds worth of prizes up for grabs first place is 200 grand second place is 75 grand all the way down to paying the top 5,000 places which is pretty cool it's 20 pound entry you have to be 18 or over there are links in the description to begambleaware.org there's also links in the description to sign up and play if you want to for anyone that plays FPL which would be a lot of you looking at this channel the scoring system is very similar the way you pick players is very similar as well there's some subtle differences which you can check out when you go and sign up and get playing like for example a shot on goal um, is rewarded with a few points as well uh, and if you you know if a defender fouls a player and then that player or another player from the team scores the free kick you'll lose some points so there are some subtle differences but it's very easy to pick up as an fpl player one of the reasons is when you look at how you build a team a lot of the prices are the same now not all the prices are the same so for example as you can see on the left here Mane is 10 million which is pretty interesting because it actually creates a conversation around whether to have Salah or Mane which in FPL is just not a conversation worth having so there's some subtle differences in prices like Maris is 8.5 instead of 9 Tony is 6 instead of 6.5 so there are slight differences you might make with your team but ultimately what I find so good about this is I can just apply my FPL knowledge to this and if there's a player that I really want an FPL chances are that I'll want them in fan team as well so if you want to sign up and play start making your team click that link in the description below like I said there's massive prizes up for grabs and you can just apply your FPL knowledge to fan team and start picking your team pretty easily link in the description below if you want to get signed up 20 quid 200,000 pounds the first place so for us I'm going to go for Saka look some players on this list will just literally be the best some will be because i think they're going to be really good value etc i think obviously uh, arsenal have got a bamiang and he could be good maybe he'll bounce back after a pretty poor season by his standards last year but i just think sack is going to be great value there's all this talk about smith row at 5.5 million i get it he could play number 10 people like the price point but i just think saka is pretty much guaranteed minutes when he's fit when he's available and he's going to play anywhere across that front three i don't see him being used as much as a fullback or as a wing back this year and i think he'll kick on he's very young so he's going to improve his stats going to improve his finishing improve his goals improve his assists i think potential value in, in the defense if chambers gets minutes maybe ben white as well but they're not that exciting so for arsenal i'm going for saka abamyang could be the one but i just think his price point is going to be awkward this year and not too many people are going to look at him early on so one of the problems with recording videos in advance especially when the transfer window hasn't shut yet is we don't know if players are going to move jack Grealish is one in question he could go to man city maybe he'll even be a man city player by the time this video goes out but the one thing that i think is going to remain the same at villa is watkins is going to be their main striker whether it's grealish buendia triori whether leon bailey comes in instead of one of them whether el Ghazi gets minutes it doesn't matter watkins is going to be the focal point up front i think he proved last year 14 goals nine assists he can do it in the premier league and i think whether grealish stays or goes he's going to get plenty of service this year i think villa attack could even improve from last year where it was already pretty good right obviously Grealish would be a big miss if he does go but I still think Watkins is going to provide excellent value and I think if you look at Wilson maybe a little bit injury prone Antonio maybe a little bit injury prone Calvert-Lewin and Bamford are both a little bit more expensive I think at the 7.5 million price point Watkins is looking really good and I just don't rate Villa defense all that much either so I'm not really looking at any of their players I think Martinez is overpriced so me for me I should say best player at Aston Villa this year I'm going for Watkins I think for Brentford it's a pretty easy one it has to be Tony like I'm looking at the squad right now um, defensive wise I just don't really think any of the defenders from any of the promoted teams are going to come up and do what Leeds did last year where Dallas was kind of not integral to our squads but in a lot of our teams provided excellent value I'm just not seeing that I don't doesn't mean that we will never own their players but I don't think they can ever be considered the best option um, at their club the only other player is in Buemo but I just think he's quite good value in midfield but Tony is also really good value in the forward line especially when the likes of the players I've just spoken about Watkins Wilson and Antonio etc have all had a price bump this year even Chris Wood is more expensive so he's going to be involved with any goals that Brentford score he's also on penalties it has to be Tony at Brentford so I'm going to back Brighton 
to actually get some clean sheets right and capitalize on what great stats they had last year. Their expected goals conceded were brilliant. I know it often feels like they make a mistake or they get a red card here or there and they always end up conceding goals. But one thing I like about Dunk is his goal threat is actually pretty decent. Right, He scored five goals last year and we're all looking at trying to get in Lamptey, maybe go for Veltman if he's not fit and obviously Ben White's gone as well now. I just think Lewis Dunk, yes, you pay that little bit extra, but you know what you're getting. He's going to play every week, very rare is he injury prone uh, and he's also good for goal threat as well i just think in midfield trossard gross i don't know if they're going to get minutes week in week out this year and obviously striker wise i just can't back Welbeck or more pay i think maybe if brighton sign a striker before the transfer window is up and that striker gets minutes week in week out like tammy abraham would be amazing i don't think that's going to happen but it would be amazing that player might become the best at the club but i think right now it has to be dunk you know what you're getting hopeful for some more clean sheets this year and decent goal threat too gotta be honest Burnley was quite tough because the defenders are okay. They usually are. Obviously, you've got the likes of Taylor and Loughton at 4.5 million. I just think there's better 4.5 million options this year. Midfield, just McNeil. Is he ever going to push on at Burnley and become a really good option for our FPL teams? I'm not so sure. So Chris Wood's almost like a default pick. Now, to be fair, when he plays, he usually gets pretty good minutes. And his underlying stats are always good, right? He's easily, um, every single season, going to give you at least 10 goals plus as long as he doesn't get injured. So if you get him in at the right time, he's decent. 4.2 points for match is not that bad. I think for the most part for our FPL teams, a lot of the time we're just going to want to spend that extra 0.5 million on a Watkins, Antonio, etc. But I think if we're talking about Burnley, it has to be Chris Wood. Um, but I don't think there's too many options to choose from, to be honest. I really wanted to back the numbers and go with Werner for this pick for Chelsea because despite the easy chances that he kept missing last year, he did keep getting into the right um, places. He did keep getting shots away. They just weren't going in, but it's just... It's been so long now where I just wonder if his confidence has gone a little bit. It might be the fact that he only needs a little bit of confidence to get back to scoring plenty of goals. And we might see that this year. But I think if Havertz is going to play as the number nine, if Chelsea don't sign a striker, obviously there's all the talk about Haaland, then he's probably going to get pretty good minutes in that position. And that's one thing that's kind of difficult to get at Chelsea is guaranteed minutes. I think Rudiger maybe was due a, um, a call up possibly for this because he's going to play most games, going to get a lot of clean sheets. But goal threat is not that high. And I just think Chilwell will miss enough minutes where I'll be a little bit frustrating. So I'm going to go for Havertz, playing as the number nine. He's obviously very young, so we hope it will kick on from here as well. And last season, he was kind of played in lots of different positions. So if Tuchel's now got him as the number nine, going to play him there regularly, can improve there, get plenty of goals. And for 8.5 million, could be a bargain. It would have been pretty easy just to go for Zaha at Crystal Palace, right? Because he's always in the mix, plays pretty much week in, week out when he's available. But I'm going to go for Christian Benteke. I don't think I can back the defence because they were so poor last year. And I know they've made some good signings, but I'm just not convinced they can kind of turn things around quick enough to the point where um, the best player at Crystal Palace is going to be a defender. But maybe I'll be wrong. So I'm going to go for Benteke. He always posts good numbers, but obviously... There was a, it was a long time ago when he was at Aston Villa just banging in the goals, kind of almost like week in, week out. That's what it felt like anyway. But I think he's at Palace now. I think he's enjoying being there. I think he's either signed or he's about to sign a new deal. He said he's happy. Vieira's obviously come in, made some pretty nice signings as well. And it's kind of a big squad overhaul. But I feel like Benteke is still going to be their central striker. He's going to be the focal point up front. And why not push on from the 10 goals he got last year? He is capable of hitting that kind of 15 mark. Obviously, from an FPL point of view, we don't need them to be hitting 20, 25 goals because you only own them for certain sections of the season. But I think he can push on. His numbers are looking good. They usually do. He's got a manager now that hopefully will be maybe a little bit more attacking. They've made some exciting signings. I'm going for Benteke, not Zaha. So I found Everton quite tough, to be honest. Right, I've put Calvert-Lewin as the pick, but also I was quite close between him and Luca Dean because I just think the narrative around Rafa Benitez making Everton a better defensive side, I think it's true. I think that will happen, right? And I don't think it's going to be that hard to do either because they really weren't that good last year they did concede quite a few chances so i think rafa benitez will do that the big question is will he then stifle luca dean's um, potential for going forward will luca dean get more free kicks corners etc which he is very good at as we know his delivery is brilliant he can take a good direct free kick as well so that's all kind of up in the air whereas with calvert lewin i feel like you know what you're getting and i almost feel like he's being a little bit forgotten about at the start of the season
season. Now, obviously, he's been away uh, with the Euro 2020 squad for England, etc. But I just think he is consistent for the last couple of seasons in terms of the chances he's getting. His expected goals per 90, 0.48, very similar to the season before. He's going to be that main focal point up front. We'll have to wait and see if they play two up front. I don't think that's how it's going to go. I think Richarlison will play off the left as normal. And I think that's better for Calvert-Lewin to be the sole striker. We saw it last year a couple of times when it was him and Richarlison in a two. Didn't work out quite as well for Calvert-Lewin. But I just don't see um, Rafa Benitez doing that this year. Five points for match. Again, another young player. I don't see why he can't kick on a little bit. And he's already got extremely good underlying numbers. So I think another season of scoring 15 plus goals is not out of the question. And he'll be the best option from Everton. Leeds, another tough one, right? It could have been Bamford. He's on penalties. As long as he doesn't miss, he's going to keep them. And that could add to his goal tally that he already scored last year, which was brilliant. But he's 8 million. And I just think Rafinha for 6.5 just offers much better value. His underlying numbers are brilliant. He already got 16 returns last year and he didn't even start at the beginning of the season anyway. Uh, but I do think Leeds are quite exciting. There's obviously like second season syndrome or whatever. You know, when a team comes up, they do well. And then the second season, it's just not as good. I just don't think Bielsa is going to let that happen with Leeds. I also think Firpo could show that he's worth that extra 0.5 million over like Ailing and Lorente as well. But if I'm picking one player, I think it has to be Rafinha. I'm very big on him this season. I think he's going to make a mockery of that price tag. I think he'll be over 7 million easily by the end of the season. And 16 returns, he could easily get 20 plus this year. Plus he's nailed. He's going to play 80 to 90 minutes pretty much every week. So every year... Jamie Vardy gets another year older and every year I think right this will be the season where he just starts to slow down a bit and it hasn't happened yet and I'm not even sure it's going to happen next season either but I just think 10.5 million I just can't pay or think about him at that price when he's actually gone up from the previous season I know he's still on penalties but I just think at some point something has to give for him uh, and I'm going to bet on it being this year so I'm going to go for Barnes instead Leicester's tricky because we don't know what formation they're necessarily going to play week in week out which is a little bit of a problem because if they play two up front chances are that Barnes could miss out we may see Madison move clubs there's lots of talk about him going to Arsenal and I just think defensively I don't know if Pereira and Castagna are worth the 5.5 and the rest of them just aren't that exciting so I'm going to go for Harvey Barnes another young player that I expect to kick on 7 million is a, is a decent price again if you're weighing up like him versus Rafinha then I think it's a no-brainer it has to be Rafinha but if we're looking to put another midfielder in at a slightly cheap price point like 7 million then I do like Harvey Barnes and I'm going to bet on Jamie Vardy just at some point slowing down a little bit. Will it be this year? Probably not. Do I need to say much? I mean, Liverpool are just so good when it comes to FPL because not only are they great at scoring goals, keeping clean sheets, but also their players are nailed. It's what we don't have at Man City. So the likes of Salah are brilliant. If Trent, Robertson, Mane were at different clubs, there's every chance that all three of those players would have been on this list. But I can only pick one. This guy's never scored less than 231 points while being at Liverpool. I don't think he's going to slow down. He's on penalties. I don't see why Liverpool won't bounce back and start competing again this year as long as everyone can stay fit. It's got to be Salah. So not many players nailed on at City, especially in attack, but Kevin De Bruyne pretty much plays every single game when he's fit. It's very rare that he doesn't when he's available. He's in that team. I think last year, I think he underperformed, like 18 returns. I know he didn't play a huge amount of minutes, which was part of the problem, um, but I just think he is capable of much higher scores than that. We saw him a couple of seasons ago get 251 points. The problem with City is there's not too many other options to really choose from. I mean, Mahrez, Sterling, Foden, etc. on their day are all brilliant. But who can predict them playing week in, week out? You just can't. And then in defence, you've got Diaz. But he's a bit boring, right? Not too much goal threat. Cancelo is the one I'd love to pick. But I just don't know if he's going to get enough minutes either. So no matter who comes in, whether Harry Kane comes in, although Kane probably could be pretty damn good at City, or Grealish, De Bruyne is going to be a mainstay there. He's going to continue to create a ridiculous amount of chances. He's going to get his fair share of goals as well. It has to be him yeah again like what is what else is there to say it has to be bruno fernandez maybe sancho will hit the ground running become great value maybe mason greenwood might get enough minutes but i'm not so sure about that over the course of a season which is what we're talking about here luke shaw i do think has the opportunity to really build on what he started last year he's creating a lot of chances obviously cavani's there now sancho too i really do think that will help like sancho creating from the right and luke shaw arriving at the back post could be big for man united so for 5.5 i do think luke shaw potential to have gotten onto this list but it's hard not just to have Bruno Fernandes he's going to be 
pretty much involved with everything Man United do going forward. If he sticks to that number 10 position as well, he can get forward. Sancho can maybe provide him with some extra goals as well. So I don't think he's going to necessarily be 18, but I don't see why he can't get close to what he did last year, which was already ridiculous. It's got to be Fernandez. So this is a bit like Burnley and Chris Wood. It's kind of just the default pick at Newcastle. I mean, who else do you even think about, right? Sam Maximin's also a forward. There's no way he's getting in ahead of Wilson. I think Wilson's a better goal scorer. He's on penalties and he'll shine when he's got minutes. So the only thing is, would he get injured again, right? Which is always a bit of a concern. Like you've got Fraser. Could we see the Fraser-Wilson combo that we saw a few seasons ago at Bournemouth? Maybe, but I just don't think they've got enough midfielders to talk about. And defenders, it's Newcastle, right? I'm not expecting them to get many clean sheets. They don't really have massively attacking players either it's got to be Wilson another default pick if in doubt pick the man with the penalties right again Norwich just not going to keep many clean sheets a bit like Newcastle defensively maybe we'll see Aaron's go forward a little bit but I just don't see the clean sheets backing that up at all and obviously midfield wise again it's just not too much to shout home about from an FPL point of view like Countwell is a really good player if they if they're able to keep him but I just don't think he's a very good FPL option so it has to be Pookie he's on pens I know no one's looking him for the start of the season because of fixtures but they quickly clear after four game weeks and I just think if Tony hasn't performed or whoever it might be Pookie's going to get his chance and if he gets a few penalties this year obviously he's not going to score 26 goals because that's championship numbers but I'm sure he can get 10 plus so when I think about my pre-season videos so far which teams have I talked about the least then Southampton have got to be right up there like I'm looking now at their squad like no one's really going for their goalkeepers defensively they don't really have any exciting options either Walker Peters maybe but he's up to five million now midfield i'm just not a fan of ward prowse i just think yes he'll tick over but that's not necessarily what we want in our teams plus he's 6.5 same price as rafinha armstrong walcott redmond there's just not enough options there danny ying should have probably been the one that i went for because he's on penalties as well but he's eight million right che adams outscored him last year mostly because of injuries but can we say that's not going to happen again so i think for seven million che adams is probably a fair price and probably the best option at southampton over the course of the season 16 returns last year can he improve on that I think he can probably score a few more goals. We saw at the start of last season, the amount of chances he missed. You could put that down to bad finishing, but I think he was a bit unlucky. So I think he can increase his amount of goals. I think he is a team player, so the assist is something he can work on as well. Uh, so I'm going to go for Che Adams. Controversial, not going for Harry Kane. Is it controversial? I mean, part of the reason is he might leave Spurs, right? There's all this talk about him potentially not uh, turning up for training. We're going to have to wait and see what transpires there. Maybe he will or won't go to City. But I just think with Son, you know what you're getting he's a solid performer any times he steps onto the pitch no matter who he's playing he's got a chance to get you some points whether it's goals or assists obviously he had a massive 17 goals last year and i know a lot of them were scored in the first half of the season especially those first few games where he scored like what four against southampton which is pretty ridiculous but he also chips in with assists as well his numbers are good he's a great finisher 10 million is probably a fair price for him if kane does go he'll be on penalties and i think he'll be the kind of player that can just take over the mantle of being the main man right he's signed a new contract he's going to be there for the long haul now i think son is the one from spurs i do think with nuno there potentially he can make their defenders look good again Reglon for five million could be decent but it's got to be son for me got to be Saar from watford again i wouldn't necessarily trust any defensive players massively to be kind of heroes over the course of this season i'm sure maybe the goalkeepers could get some decent points backman or foster might turn out to be the keepers to go for over the long haul but i'm going to go for Saar in the attack they've got so many forwards it's hard to know exactly who's going to get minutes week in week out they could chop and change them as well if someone's not performing they bring someone else in but a mainstay in that this team this season is going to be Saar 23 returns uh, in the championship last year and we've seen him do pretty well in the Premier League the season before that as well uh, obviously I know I've talked about that Liverpool performance before um, but I just think generally he is a player that can probably make that step up to the Premier League I wouldn't be expecting massive things but he's not a massive price either he's six million so he's competing with the likes of Smith Rowe and Buemo Harrison etc uh, will he get to that level i think he's got the, the best opportunity in that watford team i mean i had to go for me boy antonio didn't i i just had to like cresswell's 5.5 i'm not sure he's going to repeat completely what he did last year i think so far is a better option like i've said before uh midfield wise i just don't think there's anyone that can compete with antonio west ham have got a lot of good uh, midfielders though bowen ben rama etc but i just think antonio is the one the big concern is obviously the fitness but when he's fit he's brilliant um the one other concern this year is they are in europe so if 
they do bring in the striker, it'll be interesting to see whether that striker gets the European matches and they save Antonio for the Premier League or whether it's vice versa. So this is a bit of a risky pick in so far that I'm not sure Antonio will get the minutes. But when he does, he's so good. Like, so good. Like, he's really, like, so good. So he's got to be the one for West Ham. You all knew it was coming anyway. So this is a little bit of hope more than anything else. Obviously, new Wolves manager. So we're not quite sure how they're going to perform. Will they be defensively sound? Will they be a better attacking team? Who's going to play? What formation will it be, right? There's a lots of kind of ifs. We just don't really know. But I think if Jimenez is fit, if he's available, he's going to be the main striker again. And I just hope that he can perform to the levels that we've seen over the last couple of seasons before, obviously, last year, um, where he obviously had that massive head injury. But he's back now. He's playing in preseason. And I just think he is one of the best strikers in the league. Right On his day, you will have to see where we can get back to that level. But the, the first few seasons when he was in the league, he was absolutely brilliant. Gets you assists, gets you goals as well. He is always involved in that Wolves attack. And I don't think it will matter what style of formation they'll play. He will be involved. So as long as he's fit... As long as he's available, and obviously he's over the... I, I don't think you maybe ever properly get over a head injury like that. But if he can get playing, he's playing week in, week out like we've seen before. He will be the man at Wolves. At least I hope he will. So there you go. That is it for this one. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Who have I got massively wrong? Should I have included a goalkeeper along the way? Was there a defender or two that should have been in instead of some of the players? Let me know who you disagree with. Let me know who you agree with as well. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a like and hit that subscribe button. Trying out something a little bit different. Um, for this pre-season if you haven't already checked out fan team make sure you do link in the description below it really is a great game to play alongside fpl because you can just apply a lot of your fpl knowledge to fan team with a few tweaks with some of the players as well and obviously there's a lot of money up for grabs you do need to be 18 or over all the links are in the description below otherwise i'll leave that video there i'll be back tomorrow with another one please do hit that like button hit subscribe and i'll see you again soon